Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Something happened today, something happened this morning. If you've been looking for the video Jun Ways to Die, you'll know that right now it's not actually on YouTube. It's actually been taken down, it's been hit with a copyright strike. And if you're thinking you know who it is, you might not, so hang on for just a moment before I, before I reveal. Let me give a little bit of background so we're all on the same page. YouTube has a couple of mechanisms by which uh, copyright holders can deal with people using their material without uh, their permission. Well, okay, I guess three. One is don't do anything, but that doesn't really count. Uh, there's a copyright claim, which is the much more common one. A claim is where the company acknowledges, hey, I know that you didn't ask me for permission and used it anyway, but I'm going to let you keep having it on YouTube, but we're going to take the revenue from it. This is something that actually I do all the time. It's not to me. It's, it's something that I do intentionally because I'm okay with that arrangement. So for example, if you go onto my LOL MTG playlist, a lot of the videos I actually make zero money off of because I understand that they're going to be hit with a copyright claim. So for example, um, A Journey into the Mind of Ross Merriam, which, shout outs to Ross Merriam. <laughs> that one actually, it has The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. I wasn't expecting to make any money off of that, and lo, I didn't. Which is okay with me, it's still a cool tribute video to a player that I like. Uh, or, what's another one, um, Greatness at Any Cost. That one has Mad World, Gary Jules. I didn't make any money off of that one. YouTube doesn't pay you by how many views you get, it pays you off of the advertisements. And if the ads shown don't have the revenue coming to you, you don't get paid. But I keep doing these anyway because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I'm not making anything because they're still, I think, t I know I'm tooting my own horn, but I think they're cool videos. And one such instance was this most recent one, Jun Ways to Die, which is, of course, a parody on Dumb Ways to Die. Originally, it was hit with a copyright claim. Uh, the company that made the music for it, for Dumb Ways to Die, <laughs> sorry, was uh, hit the video automatically. They didn't even have to manually do anything. YouTube's content ID systems, which is its algorithm for figuring what, out whether you're using copyrighted material or not, just said, hey, you're clearly using this material. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you're clearly using this material and you haven't asked permission, right? So we're going to distribute the money to them. There are exceptions. You can petition to have that removed if you think it actually is fair use. There are revenue sharing options that YouTube sometimes offers you, etc. But no, that, that they claimed the uh, the video, and I made no money off of it. It's not fair use. However, that's a copyright claim, and that had been the case. And by the way, unfortunately, that's one of those things you're going to have to take my word for because I can't show you the analytics on YouTube. That, that's gotten an MTG YouTuber in trouble before for doing. So, But if you've made these sorts of videos on YouTube before, that's not that hard to believe. Companies claim their videos automatically, claim their music or their videos, etc., when they're used. Easy enough. A strike is different. A strike is harsher. A strike is where they say, you didn't ask my permission and I will put a strike on your account. If you get three of those strikes, then your channel gets taken down. Now, a strike is essentially, not essentially, it is a legal action. Um, a claim is, you didn't ask for my video, for my content, but as long as you pay me, we're cool. A strike said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not letting you have the video up at all. Now. I have never been hit, I had never been hit with a copyright strike before. And if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, would the strike be by the company that made the music? No, they claimed it. They, they didn't go back and manually strike it. That was by somebody else. Um, that was by Jeff Hoogland. <laughs> now, Jeff Hoogland actually was featured in the video. Uh, let me show you, just a second, all of the frames that feature Jeff Hoogland. <laughs> Scoozing all your creatures out of the graveyard. Okay, so that's that's it. So he was clearly in there. And he's making a copyright strike. Now, to give a little bit more context in case you haven't seen videos more recently, 
Jeff Hoogland and I got into an argument, a debate, over Blood Moon versus Tron. He had originally blocked me, I made the video, it got spread, and then Jeff uh, unblocked me on Twitter, and I thought that we were, you know, maybe not on the greatest of terms, but at least cool. Like, we could talk, could see each other, so on and so forth. This morning, though, he struck Jun Ways to die. Now, you are... <laughs> Again, it's a legal action to put in a copyright strike. So if you don't actually have grounds to do so, that's against the law. Similarly, a counter suit, a counter notice, is a legal action. And if you don't have the rights to do so, that is against the law. <laughs> so regardless of whether Jeff was allowed to or not, if you're asking me, well, what am I going to do about it? The first thing is talk to a copyright attorney. I am not a... <laughs> I am not an attorney, and I certainly don't specialize in copyright. Just because I've been here on YouTube long enough that I think I have an impression of what the right action is, I'm going to be safe rather than sorry. So I'm going to see if I can find someone, and if you know someone who is a copyright attorney who deals with fair use, then please let me know. I'll, I'll show them the video and they can analyze it through their professional lens. Um, and I have 30 days to, I think it's 30 days, to file a countersuit. Um, I'm not going to if I'm not sure that it'll work. That's how this sort of thing goes. I don't know if Jeff has the right to do that, but technically speaking, not cool, bro. Not cool. That means that the people that wanted to see that content, and uh, I know this, this doesn't actually matter when it comes to fair use, but just as an anecdote, I went to credit him in the description of the video, just like every one whose clips I used, and I went on Twitter to try to credit him and found that I couldn't at him uh, because he had blocked me at the time. That's how I found out about all of this. Well, this came up later when he and I were on um, social media discussing again Blood, Moon, and Tron, and I said, I credited you, may not do that in the future. Regardless of how the outcome for this is, that, that possibility is gone. Um, which I used to respect him as a pro. I guess I still do respect him as a player. I um, haven't seen much of him lately, but there's a reason he's still writing professionally for Magic. There's a reason he's still making videos that a lot of people watch. Some of it's personality, I'm sure, but some of it is he's a good player. But not cool, bro. Not cool. <laughs> okay, so... If you were wondering why you can't find that video, this is why. So, uh, I'll be getting in touch with you before too long about whether or not I'm... And I, I've never put in a copyright strike myself. I don't know if it can be retracted. But there's hope, because he had previously unblocked me on Twitter, so maybe he, will, he would retract the copyright strike. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> All right. That's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.